This video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you're a creator in need of a website or online store, Squarespace has all the website building, marketing, and analytics tools you'll need to build a sleek and professional online presence. Hi there. You might be wondering why I'm in a tree. Pinafores are the greatest technological achievement of the 18th century. Is it a dress? Is it an apron? Is it overalls? We don't know. And I have to say, I love a woman who keeps me guessing. Thanks to recent cottagecore trends and shows like The Queen's Gambit, I also currently have an obsession with pinafores, which means that I have to make and or acquire as many of them as humanly possible, as soon as possible. And it couldn't come soon enough because I'm getting kind of tired of hanging on to this tree. This is getting ridiculous. That's what we're doing today. We're making pinafores. <laughs> Was this bit worth it? I don't know. Ah. Okay, first step before I do anything else is going to be to go to the thrift store to see if I can find some materials and fabrics because I don't want these to just be irregular run of the mill solid colored block pinafores. I want them to have some flavor. So once I get my materials, I am going to try to design these pinafores a little bit because I am a designer and this is a design channel. Here we are committed to the aesthetic. I am cottage core vintage inspired history bounding trash and I have to look like it. Okay, thrifting montage. some biscuits. Wow, good baking. Okay, so I just went in the thrift store and I'm like really excited because I found some weird fabric, like weird in a good way, and I don't even know if I can make this work, but hear me out, here's my idea. I found this table runner that has a stripey patchwork pattern on it, and I think it would be super cool for a more graphic 1970s inspired pinafore, but there isn't much fabric in the table runner. But I also got these curtains and they match perfectly and they have a frick ton of fabric. So I'm thinking that I can design these into like kind of a patchwork pinafore that has some graphic accents. Those are the materials that were freshly thrifted, but for the other pinafore, I'm going to be using all leftovers from my Libra witch cosplay. I had enough of the lining material left and I thought it would make an adorable springtimey pinafore, so I'll be basing my designs on these fabrics. In terms of the actual design, for the red pinafore, I tried to design the graphic patches according to how much material I thought I had. So if you're wondering why both of these are in the shorter, tighter style, the limited amount of fabric I had to work with is why. I do want to make a long, flowy one eventually, but not this week. Like I said, I really loved these 70s inspired suede skirts and play suits that I found on Pinterest, so these served as my main inspiration for the red one. So I went for an A-line type pinafore fitted at the waist and detailed with some angled patches. I thought this would give me the most interesting graphic details and allow me to stitch together different pieces of fabric if I need to. For the second pinafore, I wanted something pretty cozy and cottagecore inspired, so I went for a looser fitting silhouette with some side button closures and lots of pockets. This one feels a lot more casual and cozy, which will be great for warmer weather and frolicking about in ye old fields. Now that I have working designs for these pinafores, the next step is going to be to do some patterning and mock-ups, but before I do that, let me tell you guys about this video's sponsor, Squarespace. This year, being an artist has gone from a side gig to more of a full-time job, and I'll be honest, I kind of have no idea what I'm doing, but thankfully, Squarespace has decided to sponsor my YouTube channel. Every illustrator needs a strong portfolio, and of course, a place to sell their artwork online. And Squarespace's easy-to-use website customization helped me to set up both my portfolio and shop in under an hour. Squarespace offers dozens of professional customizable website and portfolio templates tailored for the needs of artists, bloggers, and merchants. So whenever I was designing my site, I just chose a template that I liked and then tweaked a few things like the colors and the fonts and then uploaded a selection of my portfolio pieces, which were beautifully arranged as soon as I uploaded them thanks to great features like automatic image scaling. And Squarespace also offers high compatibility, which allowed me to link my print-on-demand service directly to my Squarespace store so that I can sell using their e commerce platform. That high connectivity also allows you to link Squarespace to all of your social media accounts so that you can display social media posts on your website or publish website content to all of your favorite social media channels. Which is also great for me because I constantly forget to post on literally all of my side accounts. I am only active on YouTube and I need to change that. Another great way to connect more with your audience, which 
I obviously struggle at is through members only areas, which allow you to offer exclusive content to your biggest supporters. Through members only areas, you can send email communications, manage members, and track insights and statistics. So if you want to embark on your passion project this year, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash prickly alpaca to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring the channel again. Now, let's get back to it. Hello, my dudes. It's currently day one, which means that it is time for some preliminary sewing things. So today, so that I don't stress myself out too much, I think I'm just going to focus on patterning and then maybe doing some rough mock-ups for both of the pinafores that I wanna make. The styles I wanna make are slightly different. I think one of them is gonna be a little bit more structured, so I'm going to try to drape fabric onto my mannequin, which I've never done before, loosely based off of one of the pinafores that I already have. And then through that, try to kind of use it as a a shortcut to get to a good pattern that's well fitting and the executive producer is currently licking my foot which is very cute but also a little distracting hi it's kind of gloomy today the sun is not out it is dark and i honestly just want to really take a nap which isn't good because this is the part of the sewing process that i don't love but i'm gonna get to work i'm gonna light some candles and i'm gonna try to power through today motivation yay Since I have pretty different proportions for my mannequin and I didn't feel like adjusting everything right that instant, I decided to begin a mock-up based on this cute pinafore I thrifted a few weeks ago instead of draping fabric. Now, mock-ups are not my strong suit and neither is patterning garments that aren't made out of foam. So if you're a seamstress, you might wanna sit down for this one to avoid injury because my patterning process is truly an abomination. I can't breathe. The first mock-up was for the green design I did. I basically marked the general proportions of my reference pinafore and then measured my torso in various places to figure out where I wanted the bib, waistline, and bottom hem to fall. I know there are much better ways to pattern, but I am just a humble cosplayer, so until I learn those ways, this is what I've got. Since my design for the green pinafore has side button closures for the bib, patterning it took quite a few of my brain cells, and it's honestly pretty janky, but I'll let mock-up Kira explain. Okay, as you can see, my mock-up process is kind of a mess, but hear me out. This is what we have so far. I really like it. I think it's super cute. My general idea is to have false pockets here and then have this seam come over. I kind of like outlined how I want it to go like right here. So the back comes over and in almost like a pocket and then it closes here with buttons. That way I can just fold this down and pull it over my hips that way. And so that this piece actually has pockets, we're going to have real pockets here, here, and here. I think it's just a cute way to close this up and give it some form and detail because I really like the buttons that I got. And then I'm also going to have the straps come over from the back and then fasten here. And I don't know how well you can see that. The back of this ensemble is like kind of a mess, but I did kind of make like a triangle back here and I had to add this dart in because it was just looking like super formless. So I don't know exactly how I'm going to handle this. I'm thinking about detaching this bib piece from the skirt itself, having a waistband type thing here and then attaching this back on just so that it lays a little bit like flatter against my back and gives it some more form because right now it looks okay whenever it's pulled up. I just don't know if this dart is going to be enough to actually give this the form that it needs to be like flattering and not like potato sack. But it is definitely coming along once I fix this back piece and repattern a few more things. I think I'm going to actually start sewing this. Wow, she's really out cold right now. Hello, it is day two. I generally got a pretty good amount of stuff done yesterday. I basically just patterned out and kind of did the mock-up for the first pinafore that I wanna make. It is not the most professional work I've ever done, but I think it's functional whenever I cut out the actual pattern pieces for the pinafore. I think it's going to fit nice, which fitting is half the battle anyways, so I've kind of already done that, I hope. But I have a ton of freaking stuff to do today because today I basically set aside to make both pinafores, like assemble them and sew them together and do everything but maybe like sew on buttons, which is going to take my entire life. It's a tall order. It's unrealistic. I don't know why I do this to myself. I needed like at least three days for this project probably, but 
it's fine. I'm a little bit more motivated today because the sun is out and I also just watched Rachel Maxey's video. So my inspiration wells are currently pretty full. We should probably go and get started now. Wish me luck, thoughts and prayers. Oh boy, okay. I have also changed into the exact same outfit I was wearing yesterday because it's comfortable and please don't judge me. So instead of doing a mock-up for the second pinafore, on day two, I went straight into working on the green pinafore because I was hoping to base my pattern for both off the first mock-up I did. More on that later, but this process, of course, began with cutting out my outer and lining pieces. This is super monotonous. It's really just lots of cutting, but the executive producer seemed to think it was fascinating. Did you get a rectangle? And before you say anything, I know my scissors are super dull and my cutting job is atrocious, but shh, it's all gonna be hidden later anyway. One issue I ran into here was the limited amount of fabric since I only had a pillowcase's worth So I had to put some of the pattern pieces at weird angles to make everything fit leading to there being a horizontal seam on the hip area of the front panel We don't love that, but it is what it is once I finished cutting out my main pattern pieces I also patterned some straps out of my outer lining fabric and quickly stitched those up and pressed them I also added darts to all my pieces where necessary and then it was on to the main assembly I just pinned my outer layer to my lining layers inside out, basted all those pieces together, and flipped them. I also attached the straps to the back bib and sewed that up. Once I did a quick pinned try-on to see how she was coming along, it was time to add pockets. I very loosely patterned the pockets out of some scrap material. I just pressed and hemmed the sides, pinned them on, sewed them up, and bing, bam, boom, you got a pocket. Wow. If only the women's clothing industry could learn the value of this simple, wonderful piece of technology. Hello friends, allow me to update you on the progress so far. I've clearly done a lot just now. I have basically cut out and assembled the entire garment. Basically all I have left to do on this is add this little pocket piece and then sew on a frick ton of buttons. So we're doing pretty good so far there. But I have not even really started on the second pinafore that I want to make and it is currently 5 p.m. So next I'm going to take a food break because I have not eaten lunch yet. And then after that I'm going to try to alter the pattern that I made for the first pinafore to work for the second pinafore so that I don't have to do a whole new pattern and mock up because I just don't feel like it tonight. And then in a mad dash, try to assemble the pieces of that this evening and then late into the wee hours of the morning, sew on buttons and buttonholes. I'll be honest, I don't think I'm gonna get this done today, but when has that stopped me before from at least trying? I have a ridiculous amount of energy right now for some reason. It's probably all the coffee I drank this morning. So I'm gonna go and try to press on and get this stuff done because tomorrow I want to do other things. <laughs> This isn't at all relevant, but I'm gonna show you what I'm eating because it's delicious. Cabbage and buried in there are pierogies, which are some of my favorite things. They're like little noodle boys filled with potatoes and cheese. It's truly a marvel of humanity. And carrots in like a bean hummus. I don't know. Like my dad's food that he makes. It's really good. I've also been watching Our Flag Means Death and it is chef's kiss. We love some good, ridiculous pirate nonsense. Following my food break, I went right on to working on the red pinafore and guess what? I didn't follow the first mock-up at all. Instead, I just did a ton of unnecessary guesswork because I'm me, but I vaguely based the shape and a few of the measurements off the skirt. I drafted the back panel on an A-line based on half my weight waist measurement using my desired length and did the same for the front panel, but this time cutting it down the middle and leaving a little bit more length on one side for the button overlap. For the front bib, I drafted a flat pattern according to the measurements I took and from there just cut everything out. This is where we are with pinafore number two, ignore the hems. It's coming together slowly. Admittedly, I don't have as much of this fabric as I thought I did, so it's not going to have like a back to it really, just so that I can actually have a patch on the front here as well, working with what I have basically, but I still think it's coming together pretty cute as long as I kind of work out a few of these fit issues. One of the biggest things that I did that was kind of an uh-oh is I cut this side a little bit shorter in width than this side, and this side is actually the side that would overlap and have the buttons, which isn't great because this design needs to kind of like align, but I think I could still make it work. I'm not going to be too stingy with this. I kind of just want some cute pinafores for the summer 
summer and since I'm making both of these basically in a day, like honestly good enough. It is currently 9 p.m. I'm not making the best time in the world, certainly, but I think that at the very least I can make some pretty good progress on the actual construction slash assembly of this. I should have just gotten store-bought patterns for this project, really, but I didn't because I'm cheap and I didn't want to spend the money. There are probably a million ways that I could have done this to make this easier on myself, but am I going to do that? No. Also, I finished Our Flag Means Death. Steed and Ed are really cute, and I want season two already, but I am watching The Gilded Age right now. I don't know if it's any good, but I've heard the costumes are good, so I'm gonna binge this now to keep myself alive. I was determined to make some good progress on the construction, so I got right to work. I marked the hem length for the skirt since it was a bit longer than I wanted, and added the patchwork fabric to the front left panel. I then sewed the lining to the two front bib pieces, and it was coming together pretty nice. So the producer and I had a brief meeting, and then I sewed the lining to the rest of my skirt panels, and after that I was feeling a little ambitious, so I drafted and added some cute stacked pockets to the front right panel. Then I just finished off some of the seams and hems, and I finally had something resembling a garment. Okay, it is 1.15 a.m., and here is the progress that I've made so far on the second and four. I didn't get it done today, that's fine. I'm going to try to just go to sleep now so that I can get enough rest, and then try to finish this stuff tomorrow night. Hopefully. I'm not the only one who's feeling tired. This good croissant is like really out. She's just been sleeping all day today. It is day three now. I'm bad at planning. As you can see, I didn't finish these garments yesterday. I didn't try because I literally felt like my brain was going to stop working. Like it actually started to get painful to think, which I took as a sign to stop sewing for the night. But it's fine, it's fine. I don't have a deadline for this video or anything, but I think actually finishing these garments today is realistic. I am very excited to have two brand new pinafores, so I am going to go and get off my butt so that I can actually finish these today. At this point, I had a good bit of finishing left, so I began by whipping up some straps and attaching them to my red pinafore, and while I was at it, I also attached the bib and finished the waistband seam. I also still needed to finish the bottom hem, so I pinned and stitched that up. And now we're on to the issue of buttons and buttonholes. I've only ever sewed a buttonhole with my buttonhole foot once, but it worked, so I figured it would be easy enough. I was wrong. Eventually, I discovered my problem was literally just a piece of thread stuck in my machine, and soon enough, I was sewing buttonholes at lightning speed. I also wanted a little decorative button on that top pocket, so I hand stitched that on, and the smaller pocket also got a matching buttonhole. My red pinafore got the same treatment. First, I marked where I wanted all of my buttons and buttonholes to go, and the executive producer signed off on my work. So I sewed all of my little buttonholes on, and whenever I was done, I cut them out using sheet metal cutters because my fabric scissors are freaking dull. Hey. It's almost 2 a.m., but I'm almost done with these. Kinda. So I'm basically done with all the finishing except for hand sewing all of the buttons on, which is good progress, but also it's like I have about 20 buttons to hand sew onto these, so I still have a little bit of work left to do tonight. Since I have all of my buttonholes sewn in, what I just did was I just went and quickly marked where I want all of the actual buttons to go. Hi. I did this partially with chalk on this piece, but then I also went with pins and actually tried them on. And I just went and stuck a little pin where I want all of the buttons to go. I'm I'm going to go and do this. I think I need to give this one some TLC as well because she is being a very neater right now. Hello? <laughs> okay. Feral. That confirms my suspicions even more. So I'm going to go and do this. It's almost 2 a.m. But I think I'm just gonna power through and make it through the night. Fingers crossed. And I did proceed to give the producer some attention. She really, really appreciated it. Wow. She loves me. Regardless, as you can probably tell from this time lapse, it wasn't enough. And my cat would not leave me alone for this whole process. For an adorable distraction. In any case, sewing on buttons actually didn't take me as long as I thought I would and with some Seinfeld to pass the time. You're fired. Well, you didn't have to say it like that. Soon enough, I was done. It is just past 3 a.m. and they 
are done. I've just had my little bean here to keep me company. I have tried them on. They fit pretty nicely. Wow, I'm tired. I'm going to go to bed, but you guys are going to see the finished products of these right now in the reveal. <laughs> Welcome to the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching till the end. I know this was like a little bit different from what I've been doing just because it wasn't fully like fantasy inspired or super into any of these like niche aesthetics. I mean, it kind of is. But this video was definitely a little bit more about me just trying to make wearable items for myself, but items that I designed. I definitely enjoy the result of both of the pinafores I made, but I do think that I need a little bit of improvement in some areas. As an overview, I think I think that this pinafore is my favorite between the two just because it's kind of in the color scheme that I like. As you can see, the top is uh, pretty janky and that's mostly because I cut one of the sides too thin to begin with. And then I retroactively kind of took account for the fact that this has to overlap in order for the buttons to go down the middle. And that caused it to just look really thin and it's kind of uneven with how it closes now. I think I could fix that just by moving these buttons over a little bit. I was trying to do a design with this where it kind of got narrower at the top but in hindsight, I think I should have stuck with my original design and made it like more square. And on the other one, I think everything is really, really cute, except of course the weird bottom hems. Other than that, I think it's like pretty flattering and like casual. It is serving a little bit pillowcase, but considering I made it out of pillowcases, I think that's to be expected. But yeah, thank you so much for watching till the end of the video. You guys have been showing me so much love and support recently, and I appreciate it so much. I've been having so much fun with content lately. And if you want to show me even more support, you can like, comment, subscribe, and turn on notifications. I have so much fun content planned for the summer, so if you don't want to miss that, subscribe. When you do so, I climb a tree all the way up to the top, just for you and you alone, my lovely subscribers. That is all for me for this week. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go and climb that tree. Bye. Oh my gosh, she's purring really loud right now. Are you purring loud? You gonna say hi to the people? I think she just wants a laugh. Very big purrs. Do you guys hear this? Oh yeah, there it is. There's the cat ASMR. Oh, do you have hiccups? I'm sorry. Hey, don't rub your face on the dagger. Oh my gosh, <laughs> don't bite the dagger. Why did you do that? Can you guys tell the producer is just absolutely 100% unhinged? Okay, bye.